Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Zabadi United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here.
parent company in Japan. And uh, one of our advisors came back and he brought our department these really cool pens. They're friction pens. You can write with them and then you can erase with them. And so I was testing it out and I discovered that it writes underwater. And I tried it out on a few other words as well and it writes those fine too. <laughs>
death. The whole passage reeks of death, sorrow, guile, and decay. There is death before, death promised after, and even death in the midst. I actually had half a mind to bring in some rotting meat because the fragrance is what triggers memories more often than anything else. I didn't think you'd appreciate that too much. But it is the death of Lazarus, Lazarus that draws Jesus to Bethany. And it, is, and it is Christ's own death that drives him on to Jerusalem. And just as Jesus looked forward to his death, we should be looking forward to ours. And in case you didn't hear me, just as Jesus looked forward to his death, we should look forward to ours. Now, how many of you actually look forward to your death? Notice my hand is not up. Now, Jesus himself didn't want to die, as, is, as we will see next week, by his anguish in the Garden of Gethsemane. For no one should logically or even spiritually look forward to one's physical death. For death is the very antithesis of what God created and intended us to be. And he came so that he might conquer death. At the same time, though, when Jesus Christ bid us follow him, he bid us die as he died. And that is what we hope to accomplish today. Going back to the passage, there was death before, there was death after, and there was death during. These, the people that were gathered around Christ, were a broken and hurting people, living in a broken and hurting world, just as we are a broken and hurting people living in a broken and hurting world. These people that the passage mentions had been conquered, conquered again, exiled, built up their nation, conquered again, and were now living under the cruel ty tyranny of the Roman Empire. Their, and their overlords dared to call it the Pax Romana, the Peace of Rome, which simply meant no one had the courage to stand up and rebel against them, knowing that death would be the end. And to add this, there was much disease, rot, famine, and chaos, much like is in our world today. We in the United States are all but spoiled. We like to think we suffer or are marginalized, but really, we have it a cakewalk compared to the rest of the world. Travel just a little outside the borders and you'll get a taste of what these people, the scriptures, mention suffered every day. There is disease, corruption, indifference, and people just getting by on a thinly veiled hope that they might see tomorrow. For these individuals, it's impossible to plan for the future or put money in a retirement plan because all of, their, all of their time, their resources, and energy are spent solely on surviving through the day, if not through the moment, looking for where their next meal might come from, trying to find some water that won't kill them. As the prefer, proverbial Moodle movie title sums it up, the mode, mode of existence was and it still is in many parts of the world dead, man, walking. Yes, we all know that one day we are going to physically die, but for us that's someday down the road. For these individuals, every day is faced with, I might die today. And so as Jesus turned his face towards Jerusalem some weeks ago and walked steadily on towards the cross, taking his disciples to the fate that awaited him, Jesus was also a dead man walking. 
He was as good as dead, and yet the only person in this passage that we read that seemed to realize it was Mary. In the midst of this scene, as an act of submission and devotion, controversy ensues. Should this costly perfume have been used to worship and honor Jesus, or should the money have been saved and put aside to do God's mission here on earth by caring and helping for the poor and needy? What church or church agency has not struggled or fretted with this question? But the truth of the matter is, by focusing on such a thing, it distracts us from the worship that God requires. And that worship is that we die to ourselves. No, it is not an easy answer to how best stewards God's funds. And this passage has been used to support one side and the, or the other. And fortunately for us today, that is a topic for another sermon and conversation. But rather we look at the worship that God requires. My death. Your death. And that we look forward to it as Christ looked forward to his. Let me re-emphasize, in case I misunderstood, this is not looking forward to your physical death, or even your spiritual death, which is abhorrent, but your death to this world and its ways, and your death to death itself. When Jesus bids you follow him, he bids you die as he died not on a cross on Golgotha, but by putting aside your wishes and your desires, and if necessary, your own needs, and maybe even your physical life, so that you can follow the perfect will and perfect purpose of our God, that you die to self and live for Christ. Think of what the primary motivator in this world is. Anyone want to take a guess? Fear. Fear drives everything. Well, most everything. But ask any psychologist, counselor, psychotherapist, and they will all con con concur that the primary motivator of all individuals and groups is fear. Some of them rational, some of them irrational. And our politicians know it by constantly pitting us one against the other. If they get into power, you need to fear. If they get into power, you need to fear. And thus they get more power. And if you thought it were in my character and I would place a gun against your head and tell you to do something, would you do it? Probably. But what this passage reveals to us today is that we need not even fear our physical death. Not that we should embrace it, but rather that our physical death has become irrelevant compared to the glory of living with Christ. And we should again look forward to our death as Christ looked forward to his. And how did he do that? by joyfully submitting and being obedient to God's will and God's purpose, knowing that whatever it lay ahead, it would bring about the best that life could bring, and that the sting of death would be no more. Our death to self brings new life with Christ, and we become a new creation. In our passage today, there is the stench of death. And Mary's perfume brings a temporary aroma and a distraction from the wretchedness that surrounded them in the world. But for us today, we need not a distraction, for we have a presence and a promise. In the midst of death that precedes us, follows us and surrounds us, we have the very real and tangible presence of Jesus Christ that reminds us that our own death is no longer relevant, that our death need not be something to be feared because it's no longer relevant, and that living is Christ, dying is gain. 
Today, in our season of Lent, we continue our march forward towards the cross. And we recognize it for the vileness and the cruelty it is. But we do not fear it. For looking forward to our death as Jesus looked forward to his, we have perfect submission, joyful obedience in following the will and the purpose of God, knowing that when that day is that we do physically die, we will see our Creator face to face. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you do not know the assurance that when you die, you will meet him face to face, now is the time of salvation. And if you do know Christ as your Savior, the angels in heaven rejoice. And we must ask ourselves, are we following the perfect will and purpose of our Creator? However you respond today, the scriptures demand a response. Almighty oh God, it is such a joy that you invite us into your presence and always welcome us with open, open arms and embrace us with a hug that no earthly thing can match. We are so amazed at who you are and what you do for us and that you love us in the first place. And while we are here to sing your praises, we must at this time break and bring our prayers and petitions unto you, knowing that it is a joy for you to hear what concerns us. And in all of these cases that we present unto you, we ask your will, knowing that it will bring about the best for all involved. And we ask that we will know what your will is in all of these situations, and like your Son and our Savior, we will be joyfully obedient to what your will and purpose will be. And that in whatever we do, we do bring comfort to these individuals and bring them your love. And that in your efforts and our efforts, they can turn to you and find what you would offer them. Healing, forgiveness, comfort, peace. We lift up those who continue to be on our prayer list, our shut-ins and our injured, and we lift up also Cynthia at this time, thanking you for the healing that she has had, and pray that that continues and that she will be able to return home. We lift up Kylie with the chest pains that she's experiencing, that she will find remedy. We lift up Brooke McConaughey, who is facing surgery this Tuesday. We lift up Margaret Lindbergh for her broken hip. We also lift up those who are going through grief, the Waddle family, and may they find and turn to you for the love that they are now missing in their lives. We uh, lift up joys as well for Linda Puckett and her family as they uh, are doing well down in Florida and that Mary is no longer homeless but is now has an apartment and pray that that continues. We lift up stressful situations, especially our students and teachers as we go through testing. And all of life is a test. May they face the test with calmness and be able to recall the information they have learned and present it well on their papers. And once again, if these don't, the world around us does, that this is a broken and hurting world, so desperate for your love and your grace. There is much chaos and calamity in this world, Lord. And we pray your blessing on all of these situations, especially for our leaders and the leaders of this world. Everybody wants the power until they face the responsibility of having to deal with nightmares like this. 
And so it may be at this time that all those temptations of power and money and fame and just will seem irrelevant to the tasks that lie ahead of them. And may they seek you and find your counsel in the way that they should be the Lord. And may in all cases, may your blessing be upon them. And we lift up those individuals that the world tells us are our enemies. And we remember at this time, as you have instructed us, that humans are never, ever the enemies but rather the powers and the principalities and the sin that warps our thoughts and their thoughts and brings about the animosity that exists between us. If it is our error, let us repent and seek reconciliation. <coughs> and if it is their error, may you soften their hearts to see the error of their ways so that healing can begin. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done, all you are doing, and all you are going to do. Let us praise your name in the times of abundance, and let us praise your name in the times of leniency, or lean, when times are bad. Let it be your name that is praised always. Amen. Uh, I now ask that you turn in your hymnals to page 8, and we will begin our uh, liturgy of the Word and Table. Page 8. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Page 8. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to see you in the church. We have Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now if you would offer the peace of Christ with one another.
morning celebrate the Holy Communion of our Lord and celebrate the worship of y'all. Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. 